and so to CES 2015. Nowhere near as much phone activity as at MWC and separate events, of course, but still a few devices of interest. LG has announced the G Flex 2 with smaller 5.5-inch screen, but now 1080p, plus there's a Snapdragon 810 processor now with up to 3GB of RAM and 32GB of storage. Curiously, the battery is smaller at 3000 mAh. Plenty of other top-end specs, including a 13 megapixel sensor with OIS and laser focus. It runs Android 5 with LG's UI on top. Asus had two big announcements. The $200, that's about £140, out of contract, i.e. SIM-free, all-in Zenfone 2, has a 5.5-inch 1080p display, a 2.3 gigahertz Intel Atom chipset, and 4 gig of RAM. Maybe the chipset needs it. Plus the now Duriger 13 megapixel camera with HDR and a true tone flash, plus a 3000 milliampere battery with fast charging tech. Seriously good value if their price is true. Looking remarkably like a black Lumia 1020, the Zenfone Zoom has similar specs, but with a 3 times optical zoom mounted transversely thanks to an internal mirror. <laughs> this one might not ship until the summer, though. Samsung finally took the wraps off its Galaxy A7. It seems that the metal mid-range really is a thing, and why not? This looks terrific. The A7 has a 5.5-inch 720p Super AMOLED display, 2GB of RAM, and a couple of processor and chipset options, depending on market. 16GB of internal storage and microSD, plus a biggish 2600mAh battery and 13 megapixel camera, make this a pretty capable option. <laughs> Now I've had some feedback complaining that I've got stuck in a rut of reviewing high-end expensive phones again, so what better way to bring everything down in price than to dip into the world of Microsoft and Windows Phone. You'll remember the rather fabulous Lumia 830, superb 5-inch clear black display screen, great camera, metal bill, great speaker, swappable battery and much more, all for about £250 or so all in, which is about right. I'm even using this as my main smartphone a lot of the time. But I mention it because in many ways the Lumia 535 <laughs> is, a, is the much cheaper sister device to the 830. Um, take the 830, keep the overall form factor, but chisel away at most components and let's see how low we can get the price. For starters, never mind an aluminium chassis, the 535 is of course unashamedly all plastic, though you don't have to get bright orange, I should mention. The screen is bright, uh, but there are no clear black display polarizers, so contrast isn't quite as good. Uh, knock the resolution down from 720p to 540p, that's lowercase QHD, though still RGB pixel, of course, so still pretty crisp. No glance screen, though, or an oleophobic coating. Use virtual controls on screen, saving having to put in capacitive controls below. Knock the battery down by 300 milliamp hours to 1900 and forget the Qi wireless charging. The camera, of course, is a prime candidate too. Now just a humble 5 megapixel unit, though not a bad one. And thankfully, the front facing camera and the decently loud speaker are both present and correct. This is maximum volume. The treble is pretty, pretty decent here for a cheap speaker and the volume's not bad either. This is max volume though. It's not earth shattering, but it's good enough. <laughs> Inside, there's the same one gigabyte of RAM as the 830, and the 16 gig internal disk is now 8 gigabyte, but still very usable for Windows Phone, in which everything can now be on micro SD if needed. Let's pop the back off so you can have a look at the slot. The processor in the Lumia 535 is a Snapdragon 200 rather than a 400, but everything moves along nicely here, and you don't notice most of the time. Finally, LTE support is missing, but you know what? It's hard to argue against the balance of budget components and features in the 535. It's finely pitched to impress as much as possible for as low a price as possible, and in that regard, it succeeds. The Lumia 830 is £250 all in. The 535 is under £100 already, under 40% the price, and should be £60 or so on pay-as-you-go fairly shortly. It's a seriously cheap option for a responsive 5-inch screen smartphone. If there's anything that screams cheap other than the price, it's perhaps the plastic used, at least on this orange version. Apparently the black one has the same nice matte finish as the Lumia 630, so that's the one to get. The virtual controls here have been seen before in the Lumia 735 that I've already reviewed. The nav bar can be flicked up from the bottom of the display when needed and dismissed the same way. It's a decent enough system for budget phones and does mean that you can have as much on screen as possible, with the downside that some management of the bar is needed. 
In fact, it's an improvement for media consumption and videos of various kinds over the higher end Lumia since you don't have to have the physical backlit Windows Phone control keys lit up all the time and glaring away. And yes, Microsoft, that is a bug. <laughs> There's little point in rehashing the applications and user interface for you viewers. You'll have seen all of this before, though it's good to see Cortana and start screen folders out of the box on a Windows phone. Rumor has it that all current Windows Phone 8.x smartphones will get Windows Phone 10 or whatever it ends up being called later this year. But I have my doubts as to how well this will work. Certainly those with one gig of RAM, as here, will be much better placed. So the 535 is looking the best budget bet. As you might have guessed from my sister comment earlier, the 1905 milliamp hour battery here in the 535 is in the L4A series, yes, yes, and also fits the likes of the Lumia 830, which uses the higher voltage 3.8 volt BV variant, and both phones work with both batteries, giving users extra options when looking for drop-in emergency replacements. Uh, with typical 535 use, the battery is more than up to the task and will probably last the user a full two days on a charge. The Lumia 535 is claiming to clean up down at the low end for the sub £100 devices, and it stands a decent chance. Of the well-known brands, the Motorola Moto E is perhaps the biggest competitor, um, but I think most people would rather have the 535 if there, if there wasn't an OS or ecosystem bias already. Time for another in my periodic sponsored reviews of ProPorter Bits and Pieces. As usual, I only plug the accessories I think are worth recommending. New is this Safekeep real leather wallet with a twist. And uh, by the way, yes, it passes the Steve smell test. The basic design is the same as my normal wallet here. But the unique selling point of the Safekeep design is the special RF shielding lining built into either side of both the front two slots here on the right. Put a card in either and their contactless NFC chips won't be readable by anything in the outside world. Plus, they won't be able to interact with each other either, something which may become more important in the future. The red leather trim is just a reminder, really. The slots either side of it are secure from both front and back, as shown here. <laughs> a really smart wallet in both senses of the word, then, for any gadget fan and phone lover. What I'd like to show here is uh, the result of much research into third-party Android camera applications. Now I'm using Cyanogen Mods, so the stock camera app is pretty rubbish, but uh, Camera FV5, with a rather unusual name here, does a great job. By the way, notice it came up in maximum brightness mode, really driving the display hard. That's actually very useful when you're outside in indeterminate lighting conditions, knowing that you can always see exactly what you need to see on the screen. Um, notice uh, falling under the right thumb, a really easy EV stop control. You can just adjust this and get every shot to have the perfect exposure for what you need. Along the bottom, ISO control, uh, metering modes, uh, all the different focusing modes. And I tend to prefer tap to focus, but I'm sure you'll have your own favourites. Uh, white balance, uh, playback of the last image taken, flash options, of course, and then shooting options. Um, there we are in terms of bracketing, time lapse, uh, timer delay, stabilisation, burst mode, and so on. Up at the top left, we've got the menu. Uh, loads of general camera settings, including what all the different uh, hardware buttons do on the phone. Then, of course, you've got the photo encoding settings and uh, viewfinder, including that maximum screen brightness I was telling you about earlier on. So plenty to fiddle with there. Also, having taken a shot like that, on the along the top of the screen, it confirms the settings used uh, with the automatic algorithms by the application. Here, a 33rd of a second. With This is low light shot, of course, indoors. So a top notch application. You also can't get out of it by mistake because you have to press the back button twice. So camera FV5, I think for any stock Android application or custom ROM, um, that's a pretty good option for your camera needs.